Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue our deep dive into the standard libraries algorithm library, which again has a bunch of useful algorithms to use as building blocks for building up our code. Now today's algorithm that we're going to be looking at is Lexio Graphical Compare, and it's something that's very useful if you ever needed to do like a dictionary sort of keywords, for instance. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the algorithm library here on our favorite web page, CPP reference. And let's go ahead and search for this one. Now, this one's going to be way towards the bottom on comparison. Uh, so let's go ahead down here a bit. Here we are, comparison operations. And I'm going to be looking at lexico lexicographical compare. Wow, that's a mouthful, but uh, it is uh, descriptive of what it does. And basically, this is a comparison that returns true if one range is lexicographically less than another. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. The way to interpret that, again, is just saying, is it sorted like words would be in a dictionary, for instance? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, understand just a little bit about what this algorithm is doing. So again, we're looking at some range, which means a pair of iterators here. I'm just comparing if it's less than the second uh, range here. So this is going to use your operator less than uh, for your particular type. If it's one of the built-in primitive types, like an integer type or um, something of that nature, that'll already be um, sort of set up for you. Um, and we can otherwise give a comparison operator. Um, so you'll see that in some of the overloads here if you want to write um, some sort of custom uh, comparison here, okay? Um, and here's the, uh, sort of signature for the, uh, compare. Maybe we'll take a look at that. Let's go ahead and see if we can get an example up and running. Uh, now complexity of this one here, um, it, I guess it depends how long again it takes to do the comparison, uh, but we've got to look at potentially all of the elements in our sequence. So however large that is, you know, n elements, uh, and run the comparison operator on them. So again, that's probably some sort of linear time times some uh, factor, okay? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, I think this example just actually uh, generates some random sequences with these uh, letters here. They're using another fun uh, algorithm here, shuffle, which we haven't looked at yet if you're following this uh, series in order, but that'll probably be in the future. So, uh, you know, uh, look out for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and play around with this uh, a little bit uh with our uh c plus plus 20s compilers uh, although this is an algorithm that's been around for uh quite some time here uh so i've written a little uh unit test here just so we can go ahead and get started here um and let's go ahead and do this with uh strings here just to be a little bit different and then maybe we'll try with some uh sequences and um uh some other examples here so let's go ahead and try uh, something like Apple, which if folks know the famous story about Apple uh, computers, they wanted to be early on in the dictionary. So they started with the letter A, little fun thing there. Um, and let's go ahead and let's put another company here. Uh, let's see, I'll put Microsoft here. Okay. Uh, and we'll see, you know, if we do a lexicographical comparison, uh, which one comes first, which one is less than the other here. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and write this out and spelling. This is going to be a challenge. So I got to cheat here and highlight the word. Uh, so lexicographical compare. Um, and just like a lot of our other uh, algorithms here, again, we're going to want to start from the beginning uh, to the ending of our first sequence and the beginning and the ending of the second one. Now, of course, later on in the series, when we talk about ranges, a lot of these algorithms become even simpler to use, which is kind of nice. But uh, let's go ahead and work with what we've got here. So start from the uh, beginning of our string, the end. And sometimes I like putting these on uh, separate lines. It's a little bit easier to see the um, symmetry. Um, and that's uh, our result here, okay? Uh, now this is returning a Boolean. So let's just go ahead and capture the result there. Yeah, let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Line things up again and let's uh, return. Um, uh, Apple less than Microsoft. Uh, and by less than, uh, let's go ahead and write this, uh, comes before Microsoft in dictionary. Okay, that's what we really mean. <laughs> the results, and there we go. Okay, this is a non-controversial uh, video. 
<laughs> so uh does apple come before microsoft and dictionary and we get a one here okay perfect now this brings to mind some questions here uh, because we've seen with casing before that maybe this changes our result here um so if i change this uh for instance to an uppercase a does that come before uh, and the answer is still uh, yes, because this is, again is lexicographical uh, or dictionary ordering. OK, so again, that's the advantage of this. This is what you would expect. Most non-programmers, for instance, would expect, you know, the capitalization not to matter here. If they were searching for something in an index of a book, for example, they'd expect Apple to come before uh, Microsoft in the A section. Um, so that's uh, how this works. So let's go ahead and just take another quick peek at this data structure here. Um, we can play around with this. Let's play around with this with some uh, values, for instance. Like, let's go ahead and write another test here. Uh, test number one. And let's use something like vectors here. Um, just have a different uh, data structure here. Uh, let's do it here. Test one. And let's replace string with vector. And let's uh, make these vectors of ints, one, three, five, and seven. And let's go ahead and try this with two, four, six, and eight here. Okay. Uh, so let's have, see what happens uh, when we run uh, test number one here. And just for the sake of our code, I know this is sort of throwaway code, but let's label these V1. That's a little bit more specific here. And uh rewrite our output v1 before v2 now let's go ahead and think about uh what happens here uh so is v1 before v2 uh and the answer is yes why well you know one here um you know you can kind of think of this as just smashing together all these numbers really what it's doing here is uh comparison by comparison of these two um so for instance, um, you know, if I do this sequence here, uh, let's see, oh, we're gonna have to actually change a couple of these, something like this, I would expect V2 to come before uh, V1, okay? Uh, and that is true, okay? So we see we get a zero here, false that V1 comes before V2, uh, V2 comes first, right? So these elements are equal, 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 and then something here in the ordering tells me, you know, move this uh, ahead in the ordering. So again, really all we're doing here is a element by element uh, comparison until we can determine, you know, which of these data structures should come first here. And this is where it might be neat or interesting to write a custom uh, comparator here. Um, maybe there's something that you'd want to do, for instance, that's always, um, I mean, let, let's go ahead and see, like, uh, what if I make this value less here again? Okay, so V1 becomes V4, V2. Uh, but now I add in uh, some other number here, like 12. Um, well, this is still true here, right? Because, you know, as soon as I find, basically it's just saying, okay, these are equal, equal, can't make a decision. And then we can because it's running our uh, less than operator on uh, these characters here. So again, you can kind of think of it like a, uh, dictionary again uh, comparison right even though Apple is fewer characters than Microsoft right uh, we just look until we find the first one that's less as we do the uh, character by character comparison and that's how we sort things lexicographically okay um, uh, and that's at least with uh, something like this where again even though I have different numbers of characters one of them happens to be less here okay Let's go ahead and just take another look at this here. Um, I guess it's giving us all the uh, rules here. OK, just so we totally understand this. So two ranges are compared element by element. The first mismatching element defines which range is lexicographically less than or greater than the other. OK, uh, if one range is a prefix of another, the shorter range is going to be less than the other one. OK, again, same uh, dictionary sort of ordering. Uh, that we would find if two ranges have equivalent elements or are the same length the ranges are equal okay um and an empty range is lexicographically less than any uh non-empty range okay so if we have an empty string for instance that'd be the first thing in the character and two empty ranges of course are equal so sort of covering our cases those could be some that you try but again this is probably 
uh, a useful algorithm again if you're just uh, maybe using it to sort or order things or trying to map for instance um you know two different strings and you want to do some sort of uh, comparison with them now this type of algorithm where i might use it again just trying to think of some other use cases um you know we're doing some sort of comparison here we want to figure out which one goes first in some ordering so maybe if you had like a priority queue or something uh, and you had you know different data structures things like a bunch of vectors that you are trying to put into some sort of queue um this might be a way that you could sort them right um again you'll have to think about what that would be here again you might write a, a separate comparison because again um the instance I could think about this, like let's pretend that these are uh, vectors with a bunch of different, uh, you, you know, think about a factory, like a literal factory or something. And these vectors consist of orders, order number two, four, three, eight, like these are different products or something. You might want to use something like this or a comparison to, um, I don't know, you could feed it into a priority queue and decide you know, which, which element gets more priority based off maybe the size of the vector or, or maybe you just use the default behavior here. Um, I don't know. So those are just a few different, uh, that might be an actual use case I would use it other than uh, this case here, which is probably the common use case here for just uh, comparing, you know, things for dictionary order. All right, folks. So if you have other use cases, other ideas where you've uh, used lexicographical compare, I think it's useful uh, at least when I've had various command line tools and needed to do just like a quick output or handle things like you know one being less than 10 and then you know uh, sorting out some output that's the the use case where i've used this type of thing uh, but there's probably other use cases again this is a nice building block uh, for that so with that said folks i hope you enjoyed this um other comparison uh, algorithm that we've looked at here i think again it's it's handy to have built into the standard library and uh, I'll look forward to otherwise seeing you in the next video. Thanks for your time and attention. We're going to keep our deep dive of the algorithm going here uh, for quite some time. So I hope you're enjoying it.